Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I'm Taylor. I share these what's for dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you guys some meal ideas and motivate you to cook more for your family. So if you like that kind of thing, I hope that you'll subscribe down below so you can come back and see my future videos. As always, any recipes that I mention will be linked down below. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. It is Friday and tonight for dinner we are having bacon cheeseburgers made some bacon in the oven, made the burgers in the cast iron pan. We've got these cheddar rolls that I picked up at Kroger today on Markdown, so we're using those as the bun. And then I made some homemade chips, and I was gonna share that with y'all, but halfway through cooking them in the air fryer, I decided to cook some in the oven, and they're just, it's kind of like, the. I know the footage is gonna be kinda like all over the place. I will say they turn out basically the same oven versus air fryer but in the air fryer you have to do them batches because they need to be in a single layer. So that is that. They're, some of them are a little done. Um, Lily said they taste burnt. Some of them are a little bit floppy. That's the thing, like they don't cook evenly either method. So I don't know. And I use a mandolin, so I know that they're all the same width, but they just don't cook evenly either method. But those are the kids' plates. And I'm gonna get out of the way so Andy can make his own burger. I've got ketchup and mustard on mine, burger, cheddar cheese, bacon, lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise. And that is gonna be dinner for Friday. It is Saturday and tonight for dinner I made Parmesan crusted tilapia which I've made many many times. I have a video on my cheddar crusted chicken and I do the chicken the same way as the tilapia. Just usually I use Parmesan cheese instead of cheddar cheese when I do tilapia. Um, it's super easy. You coat the fish with some sour cream. You put some seasonings on it. I did a little bit of this today and some salt and pepper. And then you top it with some panko and then some shredded Parmesan cheese. Super easy and delicious. It bakes on like 425 for like 15 minutes. And then we are trying this risotto. Never made risotto. I bought this bagged one at Aldi. It's roasted garlic. I tasted it. It tastes pretty good. I'll let you guys know here on the screen how everybody else likes it. And then I just made a can of green beans to go with it. So these two are the kids. They're splitting a piece of tilapia. This one is mine. And this one is Andy's. And that is going to be dinner for Saturday. Okay, I've got Elijah helping me put together dinner tonight. What are we having for dinner? Mississippi Frost <laughs> Mississippi pot roast. So I've got a chuck roast over here already in the crock pot. We've already got some carrots cut up. We're going to do carrots and potatoes with it. We're going to add those. He's going to help me cut up the potatoes. Then of course, if you know Mississippi pot roast, you know we need some pepperoncinis, a stick of butter, some au jus, and some ranch seasoning. And then this is just going to cook in the crock pot on low all day. We'll have it with some rice later. Yeah. Yeah.
and here is what our Mississippi pot roast looks like. I took the meat out and shredded it up and um, removed all of the big, big pieces of fat. So that's over there in a bowl. We've got our potatoes and carrots. If you have not tried Mississippi pot roast with potatoes and carrots, highly recommend doing so. It is delicious. Uh, Andy and the kids are always disappointed if I forget the carrots. They don't really care about the potatoes as much, but if I forget carrots, they're like super sad. So definitely recommend potatoes and carrots in it. Here are our plates. This one is mine. I made some rice, perfect white rice, in the Instant Pot. I will leave the recipe down below. Super easy. Made some to go with it because my people love rice. So we've got like the meat and the potatoes and stuff over the rice with some of the like gravy. Those are the kids' plates. That is Andy's plate. I'm the only one who eats the pepperoncinis, so I have one of those. And I have more potatoes than rice because I am a potato person. But that is going to be dinner for Sunday. It is Monday and tonight for dinner I made soup. It has been cool here in Georgia the last few days and I've been wanting soup. So I made chicken noodle soup. Um, this is one of the first recipes that I ever made in my pressure cooker. I shared it last year. I looked at my channel. It was like 11 months ago. But I made a full recipe video on it just the other day. So if you missed that, make sure you go check it out. It'll be down below. And it is chicken noodle soup. And we like to serve our chicken noodle soup with Cheez-It crackers. So we just have some Cheez-Its. And we like to put those in our soup and eat it that way instead of like other crackers. And my dog is being annoying and barking at the neighbors. But that is going to be dinner for Monday. It is Tuesday and tonight for dinner we are having tacos. So I'm about to cook up some ground beef. But I wanted to go ahead and get my rice started first. I've shared this before, this is um, Mexican rice and I make it in the Instant Pot. I have gone through it step by step one time and I usually always link the video if you're interested, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk through it again tonight because it's been probably about two months since I have actually showed me making it. So for this you need a cup and a half of water, a cup and a half of white rice that is rinsed, about a fourth a cup of oil, fourth a cup of tomato sauce, two teaspoons of chicken bouillon and two teaspoons of tomato bouillon, one teaspoon of chili powder, two to three teaspoons of minced garlic, and I think that is everything. Oh, the onion, almost forgot the onion. Um, this is a fourth of a medium size onion, just diced pretty small. And then I will also get out my frozen mixed veggies. Those are added in at the end once the rice has cooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on saute and get my oil in here and also my rice so we can cook the rice until it is golden. saute the rice for about five minutes and it starts to turn a little bit golden and if you have problems with your rice sticking to the bottom of the instant pot I highly recommend this non-stick um, pot I have it in my Amazon shop I got it for my birthday and I love it I have no raw problems with the rice sticking since I got it so now that this is starting to turn golden I'm gonna go ahead and add in everything else except for the frozen veggies because as I said those will go in at the very end once this is done cooking and then once everything is in, I'm going to make sure everything is stirred and combined really well and then cook this on manual high pressure for five minutes.
Okay, after I turned off the camera when I was starting to cook this, I realized that this is set to venting, but I did switch it to sealing. I want to make sure it's always on sealing when you're cooking. And this cooked for the five minutes, and now it has been naturally releasing for 15. I'm going to go ahead and release any other steam that's in there. It's probably like nothing or very minimal if there is anything. And then I have half a cup of mixed veggies. So I will fluff the rice, stir in the veggies, and then replace the lid and just let it sit for five minutes so that the veggies can get warm. Okay, we're doing hard shell tacos tonight and if you didn't know you can cook them in your air fryer you can actually do them all at once but i had already cooked half thinking andy wasn't going to be home in time for dinner but i just got a text that he's almost home so i'm going to go ahead and heat up the other half all you have to do is cook them on 300 degrees for five minutes and they will be perfect these are the other ones that i just cooked nice and crispy and i didn't have to turn on my oven Okay, here are me and the kids' plates. Andy should be here any minute. That's probably what the dog is barking at. But um, here is Lily's. She only wanted tomato on one taco. Elijah surprisingly only wanted one taco tonight. He said maybe if he has a second one, he'll put some lettuce on it. But that is his plate. I just put a little bit of cheddar cheese on our refried beans. And then this is mine. I don't have tomato. I put salsa on it instead. But that is going to be dinner for Tuesday. It is Wednesday night and tonight on the meal plan I had spaghetti but I just didn't really want to make spaghetti tonight and I kind of wanted to use some other stuff up out of the fridge so I determined that I was going to make a pizza pasta. Not really following a recipe for this I'm just kind of winging it and throwing some stuff together tonight. I'm going to make this bow tie pasta so I've got some salted water coming to a boil back here. I've got the rest of that tomato sauce from last night when I made the Mexican rice. Um, if you're wondering what I do with the rest of that can, since you only use a fourth of a cup, I usually stick it in the fridge and throw it in anytime I make spaghetti or pizza or something. So I am going to use this jarred marinara sauce from Aldi, but I'm also going to throw this in with some extra seasoning, give us some extra sauce, and I use that up. And sometimes if I don't end up using it up, I will just stick it in the freezer in like fourth cup measurements so that then I know I have a fourth of a cup of tomato sauce and then I can just throw that in to the Mexican rice when I need it. So that's just what I do with that since you can't buy like a fourth of a cup size of tomato sauce plus it's cheaper to buy the bigger can anyways. So I'm going to use that up and then I have some olives from a pasta salad I made over the weekend and I won't use all of these but I am going to put some olives on my portion because nobody else will eat it got some sweet like mini sweet peppers i've already chopped some up so i wanted to use some of those up because kids haven't been eating them as much this week so i'm gonna throw some of those in there i've got some italian seasoning onion powder and garlic powder that i'm going to season my sausage with using pork sausage i've got some cheddar cheese and some mozzarella cheese i have another block of mozzarella but i don't feel like shredding it so i'm going to do cheddar and mozzarella and then i have some pepperonis so I'm going to go ahead and get started on cooking up my meat and then I will add in some pepperonis and peppers and then my sauce and stuff. And I am going to throw this in the oven for probably about 25 to 30 minutes on 350.
that here it is out of the oven. I did broil it on high for about a minute and this is what it looks like. And that is going to be it for dinner tonight. I'm not doing anything else, just this. For Thursday night's dinner, I started by marinating a pork loin that I had thawed out. I did this on Wednesday night so that I could marinate for 24 hours. The recipe that I follow says to let it marinate for 24 to 48 hours. And the recipe will be linked down below so that you can get exact measurements for all of this stuff for the marinade. So I mixed together a brown sugar, hoisin sauce, honey, soy sauce, dry sherry, oyster sauce, garlic, and Chinese five spice. And I just put that all in this like Tupperware container and shook it up with the meat. And then every time I like opened the fridge, if I thought about it, I like shook that up like during the course of the 24 hours. And we made this once before and we all absolutely loved it. Okay, the pork marinated all night and all day and, and now it is time to cook it. I am preheating my oven to 350. I've got this pan lined with foil and then I've got a cooling rack on top and then I place my pork on top and this is going to bake for 25 minutes, flip it and bake it for another 20 to 25 minutes and towards the end of that cook time I'm going to heat up the remaining like marinade in a pot on the stove and whisk in some cornstarch to thicken it up because we'll be basting this with the sauce and broiling it so it gets nice and crispy but that's going to be at the very end after it cooks. Okay, I just cut the pork up into little bite-sized pieces and here are our plates. We've got it on top of some fried rice. I will leave a link down below for how I make my fried rice. And I drizzled on some more of the sauce and that is going to be dinner for Thursday.
And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys got some ideas from this video. And if you did, I hope that you'll let me know in the comments down below what you plan on trying. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!